During this project, you'll create an original painting using a photograph that you took. We'll focus on color mixing and brush control. Let's get to it. To prep our chosen photo for this project, we're going to use an application called Photopea. It's free, browser-based, so it works on a Mac, a PC, or a Chromebook. Or you can use Photoshop if you have that available. The steps are the exact same and we'll be using the exact same tools. So let's get into this. When you open up PhotoP from PhotoP.com, you'll go to File, Open, select your file that you want to adjust. The image should pop up and you're ready to make adjustments. We're going to go to Image, Auto Tone, Auto Contrast, and Auto Color. Then we'll go back to Image, click Adjustments, and go down to Posterize. When you click Posterize, basically what's happening is the colors will all kind of merge together. There will be areas of color based on colors around them. You can make adjustments to Posterize by either typing in a larger or smaller number, or you can adjust the levels using this button. In my case, I like how posterized level number 5 looks best. I think I can match those colors pretty well, so I'll click OK. But depending on the image that you bring in, the image may end up looking pleasant or it may not look so good. So don't get frustrated if the first image doesn't work out for you. Subject matter is up to you. Um, I always encourage people to use their own photographs. If you use personal imagery, the works you tend to be more meaningful to you uh, rather than just jumping online and, and stealing an image. When you're happy with how it looks, click OK and you're ready to print it. To print, go to File, Export As, JPEG, bump the quality up, hit save, and you're ready to print for the next step. Now that we have our image printed, it's time to transfer and paint. Some of the materials you'll need for this project may vary depending on the type of paint that you're using, but in my case, I'm using acrylic and I'm painting on railroad board. It's similar to poster board. You could do this process with canvas as well or watercolor paper if you choose to use watercolors. So I have my image that I'm going to transfer, the railroad board cut to size. I always like to have a reference image in case I want to change something. Graphite pencil a ballpoint pen. I use red just because you can see it easily. Perhaps an eraser, a little bit of tape. And when we start painting, you'll need the appropriate size brushes, water receptacle, paper towel, and obviously the paints that you're going to be using. You'll also need a palette and perhaps something to cover the palette just so that your paint doesn't dry out. To transfer, I take a piece of tape, make a little tab on the tape so that you can take it off easily, and I'm going to tape the top of my image to my railroad board. This way, while I'm transferring it, if the image moves at all or if I have to stop, I don't waste my time and I can just register the image right back up using the tape as a reference. Cover the back of your image with graphite, paying close attention to areas you know you're going to transfer. I like to lay down graphite in different directions just to make sure I have good coverage. and then start to transfer your image. 
I suggest using a ballpoint pen. Again, I'm using red here, obviously, uh, just because it stands up against the background well, and I can see what I'm transferring. Press hard enough that you can get lines transferred to your backing. And check to make sure that your pressure is allowing you to transfer those lines. Be careful to register your image back up and then keep tracing. As I'm tracing, I start with large areas first and then go in and get the details that I want. This won't be an exact copy, so I'm going to omit some areas and change others, especially when I get to the background. Once you get large areas finished, in this case, the volleyball players finished, uh, peek to make sure that the lines look good to you, that everything transferred. If not, do your best to register the image back up and finish up whatever you need to transfer. So I'm just going to grab a few areas in this background. Again, I'm not getting a bunch of detail in the background just because I think it'll take away from the painting. Once you're finished transferring, carefully take your image off of your backing. And then I like to take that other image that I print and tape it directly to the back of my transfer image. That way I don't get graphite all over everything and I have both images as a reference for the painting. Now that I have my image transferred, I can make some adjustments to it if need be. I can go in and erase some areas, add any line work that I feel I need, and then I can go ahead and start painting. In this case, it looks like most of the lines came out pretty well. There's a couple areas I'll just go in and touch up with an eraser. And I've decided not to add anything, especially with the background. There's a couple places that I'm actually just going to go ahead and eliminate altogether. Once you're happy with your image, it's time to start mixing paint and trying to match those colors that you want to match. In my case, I think I'm going to go with the light pink first. I always like to paint lights, then darks. And that holds true when you mix as well. Always start with a, a light color and mix a, a darker color into it. For my palette setup, I'm keeping it very, very simple. I'm going to mix from primaries and use red, yellow, blue, white, and a little bit of black to finish things up for the black areas of the image. I'll set up my palette pretty simply with the primary spread out a little bit so that I have some areas to save paint and to mix paint into. Personally, I like to use primaries and mix as much as possible. I get a lot more out of the painting experience rather than just reaching for a, a paint that's already mixed. So to mix my pink, my light pink, I'm going to start with white and I'll add just a touch of red to it. Never start with a dark color and add light colors to it. Uh, if you do that, it just takes a ton of paint to get the same effect. So I start with white. And I'll put quite a bit of white in here, knowing that I'm going to mix quite a few different values and tones of this, this pink. So just a touch of red into the white. Mix it well. Some people like to grab a, a different brush to actually paint something separate from the paintbrush that they mix. In my case, I'm pretty organic, and I'll just stick with this brush. You can take some of the paint and actually paint directly onto your image to see if it matches, or you can paint off to the side and any of the extra space of your image just to test to see how things work. One advantage of using poster board paper 
or in this case railroad board is that I can test off to the side on my railroad board to see how a paint looks and then I can go in and I can crop that out later on. Painting techniques make sure you're resting your hand on the surface of whatever it is you're painting. If you hover above your painting and try to keep a steady hand as a beginner it's a very difficult thing to do and your painting's going to look pretty roughed up. So the biggest tip that I have for you is either to keep that pinky out if you're trying to stabilize your hand and space to paint or rest it on the surface where you're painting. Block in all of the different areas of your color. Again, you can test off to the side. In my case, since I can, I can trim this down later. If you're using a canvas, obviously you're not going to want to do that. And one nice thing about this project is it's an exercise in trying to match colors and you already have defined areas to paint into. If you don't like a color once it dries, and in this case the acrylic's going to dry just a little bit darker, I know that I can go back and I can remix my paint to get closer to the color that I wanted to get and it will cover pretty well. Can't do that as easily with watercolors, although you will be painting in layers if you do use watercolors most likely. But covering areas is pretty easy with acrylic and tempera as well. So I go in and just block things in. If I need to take a break, I cover my palette with plastic. That way the paint doesn't dry out. And if I do switch colors, just take a wet paper towel and clean out the areas that you need to have space for in your palette. I like to turn my painting upside down or sideways if I feel the angle is more comfortable to paint at. And it's good to get a different perspective of something that you're trying to match as well. Rather than thinking of an area as, hey, this is a face and trying to paint what you know, just paint what you see. You have areas defined here so you can just go in and paint those as separate areas. I stuck with my pink and added a touch of yellow to get this next tone. And if you do run out of paint, know that, again, this is an exercise in color matching. So just remix. If you're a little bit off, that's okay. It's just going to add some character to your painting. I hope you enjoyed this crawl level project and I hope it gives you some confidence to move into my walk and then finally run projects in other tutorials. Remember to hit like and subscribe and thanks for watching.